Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us here tonight. I do want to start off with a brief vision that I had yesterday around midnight, and then I got up to pray about it around 4 a.m. Now, in this vision, I was standing outside my home. I was holding two spoons in my hands, one spoon in my left hand, one spoon in my right, and then I dropped one spoon to the ground, and I wasn't able to retrieve it uh, beneath my deck. It was out of my reach. And as I prayed over the vision a few hours later, I believe that this is what the Lord was speaking to my heart, that these two spoons, they represented all of the food available on the grocery shelves here in the USA and all of the U.S. territories. So there will be an event that will immediately decrease the food availability down to 50%. So it's going to shock people. People are going to be panicked. And I'm not trying to bring fear, but I have heard this spoken to my spirit so many times over the past several months, and it matches up with this vision. The Lord was saying to me, tell my people to store grains. Tell them to think about the story of Joseph in Egypt and to prepare for the upcoming famine. And you know the Lord's going to be with his people. Of course he will be. He will never leave us. He'll never forsake us. But if the Lord has been nudging you to purchase things like wheat berries or barley, quinoa, oats, anything like that, any kind of grains, and if he's been nudging you and you have resisted, you know, obeying this prompting on your heart, you may want to get a move on that. I mean, 50% less food in circulation, that could mean food rationing, panic, possible violence, and desperation. So, and that's the last thing I want to do here is cause panic, but I just want to relay what I believe I heard during prayer this morning. Now, friends, you can take a lot of these uh, things, these grains, you can put them in mason jars, you can vacuum seal them, you can buy very inexpensive vacuum sealers on uh, the internet for even just $20. So, and it's very, very simple process. So look into that, pray over it, and see uh, where the Lord will lead you. Now, this next story, Circada Geddon, that's what some scientists are calling it. Trillions of these cicadas will be crawling out from underground. Now, we're not talking about the fallen angels uh, hiding out in Antarctica or in any of those deep underground cities. No, we're talking about something different, the largest emergence of these insects in decades or centuries. Now, Seth Bornstein from the AP, he wrote about uh, this spring that a couple areas in the United States will be getting a double dose of these cicadas. Now, the last time these two broods came out together, it was over 100 years ago, back in 1803. Even Thomas Jefferson wrote of them in his garden book. The problem is he mistakenly called them locusts. Now, these periodical cicadas, they are more annoying rather than causing biblical economic damage. So don't be panicked. Uh, they can hurt young trees and some fruit crops, but it's not going to be uh, widespread and it can be prevented. So don't let any TikTok videos that are out there floating around uh, saying that, you know, they're going to devour all of the crops in the Midwest or the Southeast. Don't let them uh, make you get panicked. Let's find out the facts first. Now, the largest geographic brood in the nation, it's called Brood 19. That comes out every 13 years. Now, that one is about to march through the Southeast. Uh, that would be the uh, area of Georgia and surrounding states. These regular cicadas, they will pop up through the soil when the soil temperature warms to around 64 degrees Fahrenheit, and they will appear brown at first, and then they'll begin to darken in color as they mature. Then we have another brood of cicadas that come out every 17 years. This is called brood number 13, and according to this, uh, this source, they are going to inundate 
the state of Illinois and surrounding areas. Now, when you put these two broods together, you will have more cicadas than anywhere else at any other time. And let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers. There will be around 1 million cicadas per acre over hundreds of millions of acres across 16 states. So that easily can be hundreds of trillions of cicadas. Now, periodical cicadas, they look for vegetation surrounding mature trees. That's where they can mate and they can lay eggs. And then they go underground and they feast on the root of the trees. In each species, it has its own mating call, its own, its own song. And it can sure get loud, much louder than... I think like over a hundred decibels I read. Now, one biologist, his name is Gene Kritsky, he actually created a cicada safari app. So you can track where these cicadas are. I remember one year I was driving my kids to swim practice and we almost got in a car wreck because they all just hit our windshield at the same time. And that was a very scary moment. There are a few facts I wanted to share with you to bring you a little bit of comfort. This is according to author Melanie Sifton, and she wrote this over 10 years ago. She said their primary reason for their emergence is to mate. So even though they are quite noisy, they don't do too much damage, and eating plants is one of the last things on a cicada's mind. They don't bite. They don't sting people. They're not poisonous. You don't need to use pesticides on them. It's not necessary, she wrote. And their song is one of the loudest in the insect world. And they are one of the longest living insects on the earth. They are not locusts, all right? So I hope I dispelled some of the rumors out there because someone actually called me about it. They were pretty panicked. <laughs> so we got that cleared up now, don't we? All right, well, the strongest earthquake in 25 years rocked Taiwan yesterday, and that was during rush hour, 7.4 magnitude, and at least nine people are reported dead. I don't think, uh, let's see, I got that report about, what, two hours ago, and I haven't seen any updates on those numbers. Was this a military-induced earthquake from China? Around 1,000 persons are injured, according to Taiwan's fire department. And these deaths occurred in Hualien County. That's where the epicenter was. Hundreds of residents trapped beneath partially collapsed buildings in the city of Hualien. And uh, power in portions of Taipei are still knocked out. The epicenter was 11 miles south of the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company where these semiconductor chips are made for Apple products and NVIDIA. Now, White House National Security Council spokesperson, she said that the U.S. stands ready to provide any necessary assistance, and I can see why. We rely heavily on their semiconductor production and they are also monitoring uh, the potential impact on Japan. Tsunami warnings have been lifted in the area. Several small tsunami waves reached Okinawa's prefecture in the south. So, friends, we all know the significance of Taiwan in the world chip market. Everyone is so very heavily dependent upon them. And we also know that China is eyeballing uh, Taiwan. Uh, there's you know, the war drums are there for these two nations uh, on the horizon. So let's keep the victims of the earthquake in our prayers. And we just ask the Heavenly Father to be with them, to call them, uh, to draw close to the Lord at this time of suffering. And then we have our brethren there. Uh, we want to keep them in our prayers because, you know, it's very exciting. The spirit of revival has been pouring out there in Taiwan amongst the church. And that, that's that been very encouraging to us. And I know that they will continue to get aftershocks there. So let's keep all of them in our prayers. Now, 
There's another story, musicians take on AI. Over 200 plus musicians are calling on AI developers and digital platforms to stop using AI to infringe upon and devalue the rights of human artists. What an interesting story. Some of the biggest names in the music industry are fighting big on this one, and they are concerned about the replication of their their voices, using their voices to train the AI models without paying them any compensation, uh, diluting their royalty pay. And in a letter that represented more than 200 plus artists, and they're not talking about legislation, they're calling on their technology and digital partners to work with them to make a responsible marketplace and to keep the quality of music sound and not to replace human artists. Can you see where this story could go? This story is very interesting to me because, uh, you know, when it boils down to it, you know, we're going to see who will win the humans or the AI supercomputer that will save the industry millions. Well, friends, did you see Volodymyr Zelensky's new home in the UK? Wow, it sure is an upgrade. It's about two and a half hours away from London, and I guess it's his post-war vacation spot, um, as well as royal property. It used to belong to King Charles and Princess Diana. That's where Prince William and Prince Harry were raised. It's also the home of the royal gardens. And just wondering, I wonder who footed the bill for his home away from home. I bet they are there uh, putting up new wallpaper uh, as I record this. <laughs> so, friends, very interesting things out there in the news today. There's so many things that we could cover. These are the stories I wanted to bring to you. We want to say God bless everyone out there. Hey, we're almost done with that Bible school that we are building in Kenya. A lot of work is going into it. Thanks to everyone who has been walking beside us on this project. We are we are very excited. We are getting chairs this week, the podium for the uh, pastor who'll be teaching there and uh, you know, just some nice things to decorate the main teaching room. And friends, there is nothing more important at this hour than proclaiming the everlasting gospel. So thank you to everyone who's helping with that. And also for those who are helping us with our feeding programs abroad. We love you guys. And we will talk to you again real soon. Good night.